hey you guys you are here so today's video will be a garden with me kind of video as i'm working in the garden and trying to get some things done and the first thing i want to get done today is to plant these stock plants that i started from seed um, they're also sometimes called mathiola and uh, right next to me i have a bed of tulips that i planted last fall and the combination is called night in paris and it's just such a beautiful combination of purple pink and white tulips and i've been repeating this uh, exact planting here for the last couple of years but i always feel like i need a little bit of extra something in here so i planted some violas here a couple of years ago but this year i'm going to try to grow stock now i don't know if you can tell but these are actually in soil blocks and um i wanted to show you the difference between the soil block ones and the ones that are uh, grown in the regular plant cells actually you know what let me zoom in i'll show you a little bit up close all right, so these are the ones grown in regular plant cells. And I actually really like this kit right here uh, because it comes in these uh, clear plant cells and I can see the root system developing. Look how beautiful that is. Um, and this kit actually comes with this dome that you can open and close as your seeds are germinating to keep the humidity up or down. Now, I don't know if you could tell, let me get one of these soil block ones but these are actually quite bigger than these. And I don't think that's um, because the way they were grown, the soil blocks versus these plant cells, I think it's because of the capacity of the soil that they were in. Now, these are really healthy with healthy root system. The one thing, I don't know if you see that, the leaves are curling a little bit, and that's because watering soil blocks is a little bit tricky. Um, they definitely dry out a lot faster than the plants in these containers like this. So you have to stay on top of it, which I didn't. And I let them dry out a couple of times and you have to water them from the bottom so the soil blocks don't fall apart. But I think overall this is a good result. So um, I am going to go ahead and start planting them. And I think the planting these in the ground will be a breeze. All right, you guys, I had to take a quick break because my microphone finally died and I couldn't fix it so I'm not sure if you can hear the difference in the sound but I'm going to have to go on with the video because I have to plant these babies here <laughs> so um, I don't know if I mentioned this uh, or not already these are double white stock and the interesting thing about double stock is that when you buy the seeds not all of them will come out double and um, it usually will say on the packet uh, what percentage of double flowers you will get. Now, I don't have anything against single flowers, but I just wanted a little bit more fluff in this bed, and I thought that double white flowers will be just perfect. Now, even when you get your seeds germinated, and let's say on this packet it did say 90%, and the 10% will be single, I can still remove those because the interesting thing about stock seedlings is that you can tell by the cotyledons, which are the juvenile leaves, the first leaves that appear on the seedling, which ones are double and which ones are single. And uh, what you tell is that the fused cotyledons are most likely singles. So what I did when these guys germinated, I actually removed all of the seedlings with fused cotyledons. So hopefully all of these will come out as double. Another thing about stock that is good to know that it is extremely hardy. They actually are okay with temperatures as low as 26 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't think that will go that low um, in the next couple of weeks to a month. But let's say there will be some freaky weather event. I will actually run out and just cover them with a frost blanket. But these plants are extremely hardy and actually do a lot better in cooler weather than in warmer weather.
All right, so these are all planted and it looks really good whether they will bloom together with the tulips i am not sure this is 100 percent an experiment for me so we'll see i'll keep you updated all right so the next garden task is to bump up these digitalis that i have here at the uh, seed starting station and i also wanted to show you the tomatoes that i've been here for a couple of months they look really good and ready to harvest so here are the orange hot tomatoes that I started back in December. They are ready to eat, but I think they are too beautiful <laughs> to eat. Love them. Uh, but the next task is to bump up these uh, digitalis that I have here. As you can see, the germination rate wasn't that great. And also have some algae problems here because I ran out of vermiculite to cover the trays. But uh, these guys are ready to go to the next size pots anyway, so I'm just going to do that next. Before I do, I just wanted to show you some amaryllis that are blooming in the plant room. They are so beautiful, you guys. So the double one right here is white nymph, and the others are apple blossom. These are the ones that I dug up from the garden back in September, and I put them into dormancy. And they are only now starting to bloom but they look absolutely beautiful, so I'm not complaining. I hope the sound is okay, you guys. I'm uh, really worried about this. I hope I don't have to redo this video. But uh, these are my little baby uh, digitalis or fox gloves. And the reason why I'm going to bump them up because they're still quite tiny and they will just get lost in the garden if I plant them um, up in this size. So I will put them in these size pots or cups. These are actually our coffee cups that I've been rinsing off after use. And they're also compostable. So after these um, digitalis are planted out in the garden, I can just throw these in the compost and they will biodegrade. The only thing I need to do is poke holes on the bottom. These, real quick. I have my potting mix here. I wanted to make sure that I put a little bit of water in here so it's not too dry. And potting up seedlings is fairly simple. You just fill up your pot and you take your baby seedling out. I will uh, zoom in closer uh, in the next one. Take it out just like this. And put it up. Hold on. Now, if you're having a difficulty taking these out of the cells, you can use a chopstick, but I bought a set of cloches and it actually came with these tools mini tools which is like the cutest thing i've ever seen so all i have to do is just do this and look at that so easy So when you put up seedlings, make sure that the next size pot that you pick is not too big. What I like to do is pick a pot that is about an inch bigger than the previous one because otherwise they can become uh, waterlogged. Speaking of water, after you pot these up, just give them a little bit of drink. And what I'm going to do is place these under the grow lights again until they get just a little bit bigger and then i'm going to start hardening them off before i uh, plant them outside another thing i did a couple of days ago is check on all of my dahlia tubers because what could happen around this time of the year some of them can become really desiccated and dry out 
and uh, some of them can actually start growing. So when I checked my 70 dahlia tubers that I saved from a uh, previous season, I actually had both of the situations. Some of them really dry. I actually left one example to show you. You can see the tuber is really puckered and wrinkled. It doesn't mean that it's a bad tuber. A lot of them grow just fine, but you will have better success if you plant this up um, right away. And another situation is when your dahlias start to grow like this. There's no stopping this. So I'm going to pot this one up as well. So here I uh, planted some of them up already. And for a um, space saving solution, I actually use this tub because I know I'm not going to have enough space to plant up 70 dahlia tubers. A tubs like this is a great way to kind of stack up your dahlias as you're starting to grow them. So this tub can fit eight dahlias in here. And I just want to make sure that they are nice and hydrated. And if they're starting to grow, they're um, receiving nutrients. So yeah, just check your tubers, make sure you're okay. And if you see the ones that start to dry out and the ones that are starting to grow, pot them up. And the last thing I wanted to do today is plant up our front pots. Um, I finally cleaned them out of all the Christmas stuff, believe it or not. <laughs> I'm a little embarrassed. But I went to the local Home Depot and they were selling all of this Helleborus. How gorgeous. I could not resist. And the good thing about these is that they're perennials. So after they're done here in the pots, I could just plant them out in the garden and they will live for a very long time. I also forced some daffodils and some tulips. Uh, these are Sir Winston Churchill and this is Exotic Emperor. I may work them into the composition. And I found these beautiful branches on the street with lichen on them. This could be a little bit of an overkill. Um, we'll see if I will be able to work them into this composition, but let me get started. these are all done and I love them this is exactly what I was looking for this time of year uh, the hellebores look beautiful and the heather is just the right touch for this pot I actually had to plant the tulips in a separate pot because I jammed these plants in here so tight there was no more breathing room and um, that's perfectly fine because I'm going to disassemble everything in a couple of months so they're going to go out in the garden um, i did incorporate the branches i like the branches i wasn't sure if i would but i think they add just the right amount of whimsy in here and they actually provide a lot of support for the helleborus as well uh, let me know in the comments below if you like the branches or not um, there's no right or wrong answer because this is art uh, so on the other side, same thing, beautiful Helleborus, and I like the addition of these daffodils, can't wait for them to open up. I think they add a little bit of a spark to this composition, and I added my moss spheres from 
back when I made them for Christmas time, I think. They're doing really well. They're thriving right now. But I think this turned out so pretty. All right, you guys, I had to come inside because the cars are starting to get really loud. It's rush hour out here. But um, I hope that the sound was okay in this video without the microphone. I already ordered the new microphone. It should be on its way and I should have it by the time I make the next video. But thank you so much for following me today as I'm doing all these garden chores. And uh, I hope you learned something new today and enjoy this video. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.